Okay, I thought I would show this little barn scene painting in a few steps here. I've sketched on a little design just in pencil and then I went back and erased most of the line so that they wouldn't wouldn't be seen so through the design. Just brush mix some white and blue paint and I'm just getting the paint around the, the little barn roof right now and by brush mixing it just it kind of leaves little streaks and little places in the the sky to create effect as long as it's not like blotchy you should be okay with with whatever's there and I want to clean up this roof line just a little better that'll be okay and then I retired my other angle brush so now I've started using using this one so now I'm going to paint in a piece of fuzz paint in the little tops of a little tree area and anything with some kind of movement to it creates the illusion of trees and so since that area up there is so wet I'm going to paint in the little road I just brushed mix some burnt umber and white paint and just kind of lay the color in decide what tree color I want to use next. I'm going to put something with a little purple. And sometimes this might take a couple of coats to get a really nice effect there. bottom edge because I want another color. I'm going to use a little bit of this burnt sienna and come right up under there and put in kind of some ground effect to maybe look like a little distant field kind of thing. And I just do that the same way, just brush mixing the paint. I want it a little darker toward the bottom. And then I'm going to use just some yellow and come right up under it and do a little bit of yellow to maybe emulate like a roadside and some little flowers that were blooming close to the roadway. And I need to need to touch up the the purple where it's going to kind of touch the barn right there. And I'm gonna go back and add just a little bit more across the top with some white mixed with it to lighten it a little bit. Cool, that will work. Okay, now I have to get my Call it my barn painting brush. I thought I had gotten a little wider one and brought it in here, and now I don't see it, but that's okay. I'll 
we're going to take a little bit of brown and burnt umber and I like to put just a touch of blue and a little bit of the burnt sienna and following that roof line I like to make these strokes straight up and down as possible so that it looks like the old barn wood. My inspiration comes from all of the barns and old barn-like buildings that are still on the property here, even though most of them are falling in because it's no longer a working farm. But the old barns are just fantastic. They're just, I'm amazed at just walking around sometimes looking at them. And so for the side, I want to turn and run the brush this direction. For me, it just helps shape the barn a little bit. And then I like to come from the ends with a little bit of brown and pull it in just so that it helps kind of frame the side but by the time I do what I'm going to do to it it's not going to matter much anyway you're not going to see a lot of it then I'm going to take some white and burnt sienna and I'm going to try to paint these little barns on these odd shaped rocks I have to paint like over these little humps and such as that it can be a little bit tedious to to maneuver the brush but I think they turn out really cute and I like the way they look where the barn really becomes a part of the rock not just on the part of the rock that you can see the best. So. Now, I want to take this little section here because it's the little eave that you see from the other side but you're only seeing that little part of it and I have to kind of join my little peak there and if that needs any touching up once it dries then I can add that to it but for now that pretty much does what I need it to do and let's see if I can make this brush, since it's a little bigger, do a little better for me. I'm going to put in some, just some little foreground grasses and let it come right up to the, kind of the little roadway edge. always call this little brush my magic brush. I don't know what I'm going to do when it's it doesn't have any hairs left on it. I won't have this to do this with. I use it to kind of get in there and work out all those little little bitty tiny spots that didn't quite get whatever it was that they needed. Let's see. I think we need a little bit of dark purple along the bottom here so that it kind of sets that down and we need to put a little bit of 
yellow across the top of this so that we can kind of push it back a little bit and see the dimension that it created. Then let's see. I think maybe just a touch of the burnt sienna along the bottom of this yellow section here. And then I want to put a nice shadow of the burnt sienna right along there. Perfect. Now we'll put some burnt umber. Come in here at angle like this and kind of still with the the paint only loaded on just the toe of the angle brush and then that helps create that side of the of the pathway and it's, I had used all my black paint up while I got <laughs> painting the rocks that I did the flowers on I didn't have any more black out. Now, let's do some shading on the barn. that little section and under this eave here I'm just barely picking up a, a tad more paint each time we're not going to see that edge of the barn but we'll put it there just so we know it was there and then let's shade it across the bottom and then I'll put the door on it in just a minute. The little door in the windows. Just a touch more black right there. Okay, now let's take that burnt umber paint again. On the opposite side of the little path, let's rub some paint in it right up to that grassy edge, and that's going to create some dimension and actually make it look like the road has like little roots and things like that in it. Okay, now. Take this was a little flat brush, but it's about seen better days. And I'm only going to take just a tiny little bit of the yellow paint and right along that edge where this joins, but I don't want to lose all of my dark. I'm going to just pounce some of that color to kind of look like some kind of little foliage is growing in that little that little bitty section there and then that helps bring that a little more forward and then I'm going to take that same brush and kind of with the same motion Kind of giving the illusion that there's maybe some little rows of something growing there. And I'm not going to do too much to it because it's so far away. You're not going to see it anyway. Now, let's see. Let's use this brush. See if we've got enough of this dark green paint left out here. Let's kind of set this barn down on the ground by putting just a, just a 
just some little do nothing foliagey looking stuff growing right up under it. And sometimes just to give it a little life, I'll go back with just a tiny little bit of yellow and just do a few little dots as if maybe it was some kind of little yellow blooming flowers of some sort. And there's no need to do anything else, you know, to it other than that. Now, I want to take my darker colors here, make a really, really rich black green. And just come in here, I'm going to bring this like bush or tree right up over the edge of the barn and just kind of bring it up there and then I don't have to worry about anything else on that end of the barn that sort of takes care of it. Now before I forget it let me go back and add just a couple little clouds in the sky if I can stay out of that dark green paint now. There we go. And then when the rock is actually picked up and looked at, you'll be able to see that and go, oh cool, there's little clouds in the sky. <laughs> I've actually had people that have done that I was like, well, yeah. And we'll just lay in the little barn door. Most of the barns here on this farm were chicken houses. And that was kind of how they looked. They had a great big opening at one end and then had all these little windowy areas and because they raise chickens for eggs and stuff and so I was never here way back then but it's just fascinating to hear my husband talk about it sometime okay I want to add just a little bit of foliage effect to these far trees and what that's going to do, that's going to kind of help raise the height of them so that they don't look quite so flat. Then I'm going to do the same thing with this purpley part here. And it just gives the illusion that there's something there it's not just flat painted and what I'm going to do now that this is dry we have a lot of the old buildings around here have wisteria that vine up on them in the spring of the year when the wisteria blooms and it's just so pretty and so this is just my way of kind of making like a a faux wisteria effect and so I'll do that down part of the of the green part there on the end <laughs> let's see I'm gonna have to have some more dark green paint out now honestly the one I'm going to put out is not as dark as the one that I had been using. I don't care for the change in the paint colors. I like the richness of some of the colors I was used to using for years and years and now that I'm to the point I have to buy some paint colors they're just not the same as they used to be. So I wanted to put that little bit of green there so I wouldn't lose all of my dark edge. And then I'm going to pull in kind of a mixture of the yellow and the green. 
just to look like maybe some grass that's growing in that little area. Then, where's my little... And I don't know what I'm going to do when my little scruffy brush here dies on me. <laughs> I don't know if I can create another one to look just like this or not. But I am going to... Take some red and yellow and kind of brush mix it and come up in here and just put some little just things you might imagine seeing bloom in the in the spring just to kind of fill that little area in and I don't want to lose my little light area there so I'm just going to take some yellow. I think there's a little bit of green left in the brush, but that's okay. And put on just just a little bit so that I can keep the the dimensional look going there. And make sure I retain that little light spot. Then I'm going to add some dark grasses. As I pull this forward, and hmm, what kind of flowers do I want to squash in there? Sometimes that's my dilemma. Is <laughs> What do I want to make something look like? Let's see. I hadn't done. It's my little red color. As I put out very, very, very small amounts of paint at a time, even when I work on my wet palette, so that I don't feel like I'm wasting paint. I just like these little, I call them squashed on flowers. I've been doing them for so many years, I don't even know really when the first time I ever did them was. But I had done some earlier that looked like sunflowers. Oh. I'm so disappointed in the yellow paints. just not what I was used to but we'll see if we can kind of create a, a little faux sunflower thing going on here okay then I'm going to take this brush and some burnt sienna on one side and burnt umber on the other so that I can kind of get a probably needed some more of both of these colors out on the palette too but we're gonna make this work and that will be the sunflowers and then we'll take a little bit of green and yellow paint and pull in a few little leaves I used to grow mammoth sunflowers years ago and they were as big as a dinner plate and we would put them on the picnic table for the birds to eat and my daddy thought that was the coolest thing he'd ever seen because he'd never seen nobody feeding and have birds in their yard like I did so the last thing I want to do is and when I forget to do this, as soon as I have painted my little path, that's the reason I use the little post-it note, mainly because I don't want my, my little barn to get splattered. I like to take a little bit of brown paint and spatter the barn, the barn, 
the pathway and then I take a tiny little bit of white and it gives little faux gravelly pebbly stone looking things and especially once it's all dry and you put the varnish on it it just makes them pop so that's it that's just a little rock scene oh look at the little flower painting I did there <laughs> thanks y'all